of, show of hands, how many of you heard the phrase growing up, you can be anything you want to be? Did you hear that? Yeah, what a crock that turned out to be. <laughs> I wanted to play in the NBA. Turns out I'm short, I'm slow, and I can't jump. Not a good resume, but it wasn't bad. We were middle school, and my best friend, I'll call him Alan, because that was his name. And, uh, <laughs> and they said, you can be anything you want. And he's like, dude, I'm going to be a model. And I'm like, dude, you're ugly. <laughs> you can't be whatever you want to be. I actually did an event with the NBA a few years ago, met Shaquille O'Neal. You guys know who Shaq is, right? And I literally, I walked away, I started dying laughing. My buddy said, what's so funny? I said, what if they told Shaq that growing up? You be anything you want to be. No, he can't. What if Shaq's dream in life is to be a professional horse jockey? <laughs> Imagine those horses. Oh! <laughs> and you start learning it through life. Like, I worked fast food as a teenager. Anybody else work fast food? Yes, these are my people. Never give fast food workers a hard time. I don't care what you got, what happened, don't give them a hard time. I was in line behind a guy the other day and he's just like, and just reaming the poor little girl going, Sam, no pickles on the sandwich, you take them back, don't just take the pickles off, you give me the sandwich. This girl's in tears, like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. And she goes back there and I'm thinking, I, I didn't say it, but I want to go, dude, you paid five bucks, you got food in a bag. Be happy. <laughs> But I didn't, because if you've ever worked for fast food, you know this happened. I don't know what was on his sandwich when it went behind the counter. He's not gonna want what's on it when it comes back. I'm just saying. And then I see jobs I could not do. They have road construction here in Provo? Yeah. That was a bit of a rhetorical question. They got guys in the, in the neighborhoods that stand there with that sign, stop, slow. Stop. Slow. Now these guys get paid really well, but I'm just telling you, I could not do that job. With my personality, after about a half hour, I would start messing with people. Stop, so stop, so stop. Stop. And what really cracks me up is these guys wear hard hats. Is that in case the sign falls off or something? That just makes me laugh. And then I got to thinking of other jobs I could not do. I flew out here from Atlanta, Georgia, and I flew to Salt Lake, and it was awesome, but I love flight attendants. I love them. I could not do that job. One flight of having to stand up at that door at the end of every flight. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, we'll see you. Get out of the plane! <laughs> required by law to do at the beginning of every flight to fasten your seatbelt, put this end into this end, to release, pull up on the end. I'm telling you, I would snap. Direct your attention to Ken, he's gonna show you how to fasten your seatbelt, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, the pilot, the pilot. You know what, if we're in a crash and you can't figure this out, you deserve to die. <laughs> and if we lose cabin pressure and there's a bright yellow oxygen mask swinging in front of your face and you can't figure out, breathe. Maybe your DNA does not need to be passed on. Just... <sighs> at the end of the flight, at the end of the flight, ladies and gentlemen, it's our final approach. Please put your tray tables and seat backs in the full and upright position. Why? Really, why? This, okay, safe, unsafe. Safe, unsafe. <laughs> death, life, death, life. Really? <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a cousin who's a flight attendant. I said, what is up with the trade tables? And she said, I'm not making this up. She said, well, in case of an emergency evacuation, we don't want anybody to get trapped. I would pay to see that. <laughs> Everybody evacuate immediately. Okay. Uh, my tree table fell. I couldn't do that job. Oh, I saw one job. 
One job, I've done this for over three decades. And so, so one job in three decades that if I didn't do this, I would want to do. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. A buddy of mine picks me up in a convertible. I'm like, dude, this is awesome. I said, what are you doing at Rains? He goes, only oh, Rains twice a year. That night I do the show, I go back to the hotel, I turn on the TV in Phoenix, Arizona, where it rains twice a year, they actually have a weatherman. <laughs> I would love that job. <laughs> Let's go to Canada the Weather Center. Okay, if you notice on the map here, you'll notice that we live in a desert. <laughs> I'm gonna go on a limb here and say it's gonna be hot tomorrow. <laughs> Let's take a look at the five-month forecast. 